Hello, I'm Janet McCabe, Deputy Administrator of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. I am so thrilled to be able to join you today via video on behalf of the Biden administration and EPA. As I speak to you today, I'm in my house about a mile west of the Martindale Brightwood neighborhood in Indianapolis, and I'll say more about that in a minute. Addressing racial disparities in underserved communities and environmental justice are major priorities for EPA. And a key part of these efforts is investing in communities to make them cleaner, healthier, stronger, and more economically competitive. Since its inception, EPA's Brownfields program has provided nearly $1.8 billion in grants to help underserved communities return once contaminated sites to productive use. I'm grateful to President Biden and Administrator Regan for recognizing the importance of this program in strengthening our economy and supporting environmental justice communities that have lived with blighted property for far too long. This story is also about the value of smart growth approaches championed by our Office of Policy and the Smart Growth Network in structuring comprehensive community-driven revitalization. Finally, this story is about the power of community. The best government programs in the world will only be effective if they respect the autonomy and wisdom of the neighborhoods they seek to serve. The people on the agenda today are the embodiment of this principle. Organizations like the Edna Martin Christian Center that provide a vehicle and a voice for the people who live in the neighborhood, for whom this is their home. Professionals like Chris Harrell, whom I've known for years and who puts respect for community residents front and center in every redevelopment project he works on. It's so important that we learn from the lessons of the past so that we can craft future work that makes a real difference for the people living in the neighborhoods. Today's webinar is about one of our past efforts, our shining lights in the Martindale, Brightwood and King Park neighborhoods. Neighborhoods that are almost literally a stone's throw from my home here in Indianapolis and that I've had the privilege of working closely with when I managed an organization here called Improving Kids Environment. Back in 2008, I took part in implementation of a Community Action for a Renewed Environment grant, those are called CARE grants, to the Martindale Brightwood Environmental Justice Collaborative. What I saw was a community with a high concentration of abandoned property, high poverty, poor infrastructure, and little amenities such as grocery stores or pharmacies. There was also an extraordinarily high concentration of brownfield sites. The CARE grant allowed the neighbors to learn about the environmental conditions in their community and to make their own decisions about which were the highest priorities for them. It built capacity and a sense of ownership and empowerment among the residents. Through this project and others, I became familiar with the causes of blight, abandonment, poverty, and environmental injustices. I also learned what we can do to empower communities to empower the people who have been left out of the conversation. That's why webinars like this one are so important. So what I'd like to ask all of you to do today is first, listen and think about what positive lessons we can take from the hard work associated with these past experiences. Second, think creatively about how we can begin new projects and new stories of cleanup and community revitalization and how we can best serve the residents of the communities going forward. And three, share your thoughts, don't be shy. We have a great opportunity today to set the gears in motion to improve quality of life and health for the residents of many communities. We know that achieving these goals will start with short-term successes and build over time. We all need to put our shoulders into the work to achieve these community benefits and to do our part to address the significant racial disparities in our society. Thank you again for having me and have a great discussion.